Aloha and welcome to the video. So recently I was re-watching the Dune part 1 just because I saw the previews come out for the part 2. Um, I don't really know what the release date is on that but anyway I thought it'd be fun to make a Chris knife. So the material that I picked out for this is I'm going to be using a marlin bill for the blade and then obviously I'm going to be using coal wood but if you notice on the Chris knife it's it's supposed to be the tooth of the the big sandworm and then the handle section is just like a piece of steel that's been folded around the root of the tooth and so I'm going to be simulating that with the wood and so one of the first things that I need to do is I need to stabilize the bill uh, it's mostly dried out already I've had this bill for quite a long time so I'm going to be mixing some three-part epoxy it's two parts risen one part hardener um, and it's a really thin epoxy and so it does a really good job of just filtering through and filling in all of the little gaps on the bill and while that sits I can start working on the handle or at least kind of deciding how I'm going to do the handle so one of the challenges is I need this lighter koa which is going to be simulating the metal I want it to look like it's actually wrapped around the other koa and so one of the original ideas I had was to uh, try to cut these out together that didn't quite work so I cut out just this one section and then I'm marking in on this section and then I'm actually just going to inset this piece into that piece um, and so that's what I'm doing there it's a little bit loose of a fit which is okay it doesn't need to be perfectly snug because I'm mixing uh, my wood glue with wood shavings and that's gonna fill in all of the gaps in between the two different sections. And so hopefully when I glue this together and I get the shaping, it's, you you won't see any seams. Uh, it'll just look like the two pieces of koa are, one is overlapped over top of the other. Now I haven't done any shaping yet, so as of this point in time, it looks kind of horrible. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, the other thing that I noticed on the blade is the the metal wrap that goes over the blade isn't perfectly uh, perpendicular to the blade. It kind of has this like curvature to it. And so I cut out the the koa to have that same curvature. Um, but that's going to make it a little bit of a challenge when I go to cut in this uh, tongue and groove connection here. Or not tongue and groove, mortise and tenon connection here between the marlin bill and uh, the handle. Uh, so I have it kind of laid out. Uh, I traced the marlin bill end onto this section here. I'm cutting out the majority of it with just this big auger-like uh, bit. Um, and then I'll be coming back with my chisel set to clean it up. One thing I had to be really careful with though is because the, the walls of the koa are a little bit thin now. Um, if I put too much pressure on them with a the chisel, it could split it out. And so as I was chiseling through, I decided I wanted to get my uh, vise and, and put the vise around it. That way it helps protect it from getting split as I clean out the inside. Now I'm not too worried that this is going to be weak just because uh, once I put in the marlin bill, I'm going to epoxy the entire thing together with epoxy and wood shavings. And so that should give everything a nice solid connection and the the deeper sections of the mortise and tenon joint go into that darker koa which is a lot stronger of a koa the lighter koa is more of like an edge wood so the the wood that's towards the bark so it's a little bit uh, softer not as stout um, that darker koa is a lot stronger but this goes down deep enough that um, it's going to be the root of the bill is going to be chilling right inside of that darker Koa. So I think it'll work out just fine. So what I was doing there is I was trying to trace that curved look that I had onto the bill and then I'm using a Dremel with kind of like a cutting bit to match that. Um, now this is just kind of a rough cut. I'm going to be cleaning this up with my files and sandpaper and a lot of back and forth. I skipped over pretty much all of it, but there was an enormous amount of back and forth to get the tongue and groove joint to fit nice, to get the curvature on the bill to match really cleanly with the curvature of the wood. 
and just make everything look good. Um, now I'm gonna be doing the same thing that I did with the handle where I'm gonna be mixing wood shavings with the epoxy and then just purposefully putting in way too much epoxy because I want the epoxy to fill in any and all gaps, including any small gaps that might go between the wood and uh, the, the connection joint between the wood and the bill. Because I want, again, the, the look that I want is I want the lighter koa to look like it's been hammered around the bill. And the darker koa is meant to look like an extension of the bill. Because it's all supposed to be a, like one solid unit, right? It's the, the tooth of that sandworm. So the bill too is cylindrical, which that's actually the reason why I picked a marlin bill over like a swordfish bill. Is the marlin bill... I, f I think is a lot would be similar to what the the tooth of the sandworm was it'd be more of a cylindrical and then they would sand down edges onto it um what you saw me there with the super glue is i just saw some fine cracks and so i filled those up with glue uh, ca glue and then use an accelerant to dry them and then just kept shaping but so the trick though the ch one of the challenge with the marlin bill though is the core of the bill is porous and so i i didn't want to bring the edges too far so it it does come to an edge but it's more like a stiletto like a dagger where it it's like a diamond shape if you were looking straight down the tip of the the, the marlin bill just because I, I i didn't want to go too deep on the bill i was afraid that if i got too far past the outer layers of the marlin bill i'd get into the intersections of the bill which were a little bit more porous um and that would weaken the integrity of the bill. And so it does come to edges on both sides, but not as flat as probably the Chris knife that is shown in the movies. And so the last steps here I have before I can start getting into real sanding is I'm just cleaning up the epoxy around the, the joint between the bill and the handle. And then I'm gonna be cleaning up the handle and then I'm gonna be sanding the entire piece. So. I kind of made a design decision as I was sanding this down. I decided I'm only going to be sanding the dark coal wood down to 150 grit, but I'll sand the light coal all the way up to 320 grit. So 320 grit is a finer grit. That's gonna make it smoother on the lighter coal and rougher on the darker coal. And the purpose for that was to kind of simulate again you know, the feel of the metal that's wrapped around and then the rougher sections of the tooth that aren't sanded, you just have that metal wrapped around. So I thought that would kind of match a little bit closer to how the movie is portraying the blade, um, or at least, you know, the recent movies. <laughs> uh, one of the things that was a little bit of a hassle was trying to make sure that the seam between the lighter and the darker koa actually had a good transition. It wasn't perfectly flat. If it's perfectly flush, it, it's not gonna feel realistic. It needs to have some contour between the two. So you wanna be able to feel the difference in your hand when it goes from that lighter koa to darker koa. Cause I, I really want it to look like it's wrapped around and you can see I've got that small differential, differential edge there and it's really starting to look nice. Like as of this point in time, I was getting super excited. It was actually giving the look <laughs> that I wanted it to give. It's starting to look like it was wrapped around it, which is perfect. Um, it's it's obviously not. They're just two pieces of coal glue together, but that's the illusion that I'm trying to, to make with this piece. So there's quite a bit of hand sanding, and, and even though it's a simple piece, quite a bit of detail work that I had to try to get in there. Um, on the dagger in the movie it has some design work at the base of the blade and design work on the handle i'm not going to be putting the design work in on the handle but i am going to be putting in the design work on the base of the blade i thought that would add just a, a nice contrast to the overall piece and so I, I hand sketched it out and then i'm just using my dremel bits to cut that in i did have to be really careful i'm trying to make it look both as clean as i can and at the same time I still want it to look like it was hand scratched in because that's kind of how the piece, the pictures look from the movie that, you know, it wasn't made with any type of guided machine tools. It was like someone did it by hand. Uh, you know, maybe they used 
tools to do it, but it was still done by hand. And so I'm trying to have that same aesthetic look that it's done by hand. And then I'm just filling in these gaps with marker, um, just a paint, right? The, the, in the movie, it didn't do that, um, but there's a lot deeper contrast between the grooves and the, uh, the tooth. And so you can see the design patterns a lot better. There's not a lot of contrast on the sections that I grooved out between that and the Marlin Bell. And so I used marker just to highlight and make that more of a, a, a visible design pattern. And I think that worked out well. I think it looked really nice. Uh, and then from here, it's just sanding. Um, so I have, again, I'm sanding the Marlin Bill, the blade section of the Marlin Bill down to 320, the lighter koa, the simulated metal section of the handle to 320, and then the darker section of the handle I'm only sanding to 150 grit, which is a pretty rough grit. And in addition to that, I'm actually going to texture that just a little bit more. Um, I thought about trying to texture it a ton, but I, I kind of decided against that and went with just a lighter texture. And you'll see that here in just a little bit. Uh, but I spent quite a bit of time sanding down all of those sections. So what I'm doing on the handle here is I'm just trying to add texture that kind of matches the what looks like the root of the tooth on the sword and so I'm just cutting in deeper grooves there's some gouges that are in there that I'm not sanding away and then I use the just the 150 grit so that it it feels good in the hand but it still leaves all of those uh, features and then the last thing to do is to kind of clean up the edge work on the blade before I can oil it now, the, I was super excited to oil the piece just because of all the different components. I thought it would be a nice contrasting look, and man, did it look awesome. <laughs> so I really like the, the, the bill. It's lighter on the blade and darker towards the, the connection, which is just like the movies. The lighter koa and the darker, darker koa just had a beautiful contrast. It looked exactly how I was hoping it was going to look. Uh, the, the tongue oil does darken up the lighter coat just a little bit, but it, the contrast was just perfect. And so it looked absolutely beautiful. And then it is a curly coat, and so in the right light, there's a beautiful curl on both the dark and lighter coat. But man, does that look awesome. The handle's a little bit uh, thicker than I wanted it to be, but the balance point on it ended up being perfect with that size, and so I didn't make the handle any thinner. Now uh, the balance point, I think it's somewhere around the middle. Uh, I, I show that a little bit later on, but here is the finished piece. So I added a few more coats. And so you can see that balance point is just right there in the middle. So it actually feels really good in the hand, even though it's got a little bit thicker of a handle. But I think the overall piece has turned out absolutely gorgeous. It was a ton of fun to make. Um, this piece will actually be available for purchase. So if you're interested in this piece, go ahead and send me a message on my Instagram. Um, that's where I, I sell all of those pieces from. So here's a look at it in the natural light. There are some shadows here, so it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead and move my camera out to the, the sun so you can get a better look at that. Uh, you, it's harder to see the edge, but you can see kind of how the both sides of those come to that, that edge. And then I've got the diamond shape, the ridge in the center. Uh, but overall, this was a ton of fun. I really enjoyed working on this piece. It was both a simple piece, but kind of complex uh, to get the look that I was going for. Uh, I wanted it to look similar to the Chris knife in the movie. I wanted it to look like that outer coal wood was hammered around the inner piece so that it, it, it had that look. Now the darker koa and the Marlin bill aren't super close colors, but nah, it is what it is. <laughs> well, if you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe, leave me a comment. And mahalo plenty for everyone that tunes in. And I'll see you next time. Aloha.